hello internet welcome to another ns2 learning tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to talk about different active queue management techniques now active queue management techniques are responsible for managing the queues at um, the gateway router now if we have a point in our network where uh, there is a likelihood of uh, packets being queued up we need to place an active queue management technique there in order to handle that queue and there are many active queue management techniques which are by default supported by NS2 uh, we can get the support of other latest active queue management techniques by integrating um, their frameworks into NS2. For example, we have this uh, TCL file where there are four nodes and the R2D is the router to destination node R being the R can be thought of as a gateway node. Now please understand when we establish the links between the nodes, for example, we are establishing the link between router and destination. We are specifying it to be a duplex link with a bandwidth of 1.7 MB and a delay of 20 millisecond. And this part of the code specifies the active queue management technique now currently or as a matter of fact by default drop tail is the most fo famous and mm, broadly used active queue management technique however we can change it to other options I'll we can use red and which is random early detection we can use rem random exponential marking we can use sfq which is stochastic fear queuing and many other active queue management techniques can also be used and uh, we simply need to change uh, this queue management technique here in the code right here in the code we can simply replace this with another active queue management technique now I want to show you the effect of the active queue management techniques on on let us say any parameter we pick up a packet loss rate for example so let's run this simulation so we'll go to the folder where our TCL file is located so currently my active queue management technique on router to destination link is drop tail and when you when I'm running this TCL file after simulation I get these two files rd underscore udb and st underscore udb so I'm going to open this file in PSPAD I'll go to that folder <coughs> 
and I'll open these two files now uh, PSPAD is um, an editor where we can see files which are columns and the statistical data is available right at the bottom just like we get a lot of statistical data in Microsoft Word so SD corresponds to the sent data so how many UDP packets were sent 551 total number of packets sent were 551 and rd underscore udp says uh, 543 are received so if i make a change here let let's change this to s f q it's not necessary that you change sfq on all the links However, I am going to change the queue management technique on all the links. I'm going to save it and I'll run the file again. And these two files are recreated, so I'll say yes and the total number of UDP packets sent is still the same which is 551 but the received packets have dropped from 543 to 533 so that's the effect of active queue management technique and similarly you can check uh, the other active queue management RED by simply uh, making a change in the code for wired simulation on the links and in case of wireless simulations it is passed uh, when the simulation parameters are specified and I have checked the packet loss uh, in a very easy manner however, however you can check throughput by changing AQM you can check any other parameter and see the effect of AQM and I hope this quick tutorial on active queue management techniques in NS2 was helpful and thank you so very much for watching this video and you have a good one bye bye